The Astounding Tales of Smith Wesson, PDLTGVK. Now we be Technicolor. Chapter 1, the place where the story starts abruptly while the character is extremely bored. It was a cold and dastardly day in grand old London town. The sun had his hat tied up somewhere in the depths of a suitcase, long forgotten, and the clouds had grade 9 depression. In his office in Irish Mile, Smith Wesson, a lonesome detective, was hot on the heels of boredom. Sipping furiously on his 18th cup of tea, made with leaves lining the rim of the cup, and four cubes of sugar melted into the solute. He breathed into the cup took his head up, and released his breath. <sighs> ah, what am I to do? Not a single murder in two months. What are these people doing with their spare time? Knitting? Gah! He leaned back on his chair, its legs being as frail as though it were a sickly old woman, crooked over from years of making stew, and Smith was sitting on her back. At this height, he could look at the single window in his sizable office. The rest of the office was boxed in with filing cabinets and a single desk accompanied by a single wooden door and a blind pulled down over the glass. Smith looked out the window. Yeah. Oh, what's that out there? My goodness, those men out there. Why, they're... They're... I better tell the chief right away. Chief, oh chief. Listen, what's the matter? Speed it out, boy. Well, sir, outside... Speed it out. It's outside, sir. They're setting up a flower stall. My God! Yes, sir, and the flowers are all 30% off. Goodness gracious. Well, we must get some boys down there right now. Buy some flowers for the assistants. <gasps> sir? <laughs> what? Have they lowered the prices? Afraid not, sir. Don't you mean why? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, where they are, our assistants anyway, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Indeed, sir. Well then, uh, Wesson, at ease. I talk, but I'm deeply ingrained into this flower choosing session. Naturally, sir, naturally. Smith walked around the stool and slouched against the wall of the nearby bank and lit a cigarette, using a traditional matchstick method, for he was a man of tradition and quality. For if he was to paint his lungs as black as a chimney, he was surely to do it with some style. <sighs> Suddenly, a man runs out from the bank, wearing a finely knitted balaclava placed over his face with such eloquence. In his hand resides a sizable brown sack with a pound sign painted on it, reminiscent of how a kneeless monk may paint one at the start of a poem about something quite monkish. Potatoes, most likely. Hang on a second. <laughs> Where on earth did you get that fabulous mask? 
I've always wanted one to have with the wife and, well, what not. Oh, darling. Well, I'm glad someone noticed this morning. I've stitched it by my own hand. Obviously, mine are covered due to, well, you know. Ah, of course, of course. Well, you say you made it yourself. That's a real shame. I did want one and all the stores sell the crudest of designs, you know. The really untalented people. Oh, tell me about it, darling. Absolutely atrocious. Well, I'd better be off. I'd make you one, but my frail hands might break at the sudden urge to make another one. As finely detailed as mine, as you can see. Of course, well, have a good day. Oh, and uh, same to you. Oh, and speaking of which, do you know where to find a bank? Try Camden. Many thanks, dear. Smith smiled to himself and thought, Ah, oh, why can't everybody be that kind? Just doing nothing immoral. Although maybe just one small crime every week to satisfy us. Suddenly, the alarm from the bank went off. Smith ran inside and found a few people hiding on the floor while the manager had his hand on a button. This, in turn, was causing the alarm. I say... Stop it, you garish fool. There has been a robbery, detecting Tiff. There has been no robbery, you senile old fool. Turn that damn alarm off. Flying detecting Tiff, but there has been a robbery. I highly doubt that. You, sir, are mentally impaired. Yes, sir. You are a cruel and heartless man. And of that I do agree. Well, what's all this? One of your detecting divs has been a rooster in my bank and has been telling all lies of my senile nature, of which I do not have, like I had. This man is so old I am developing somewhat of a respiratory condition from his skin-crumbling presence. <sighs> Chief... Well, I, uh, I, I, I must believe Smith on this one. Seventeen years at law school is far more effective than business school. Take him away, boys. Yeah. No, no detecting him. Don't yes, don't struggle all you no. want. Don't be more of a fool than you already are. Ha. Indeed. Now, is the money actually safe? You, check the money. Is it all there? Oh, I'm, I'm afraid it's been stolen. Stolen, you say? Good grief. Let me see that. Oh, and what's this? What, detective? A sausage. Ah, yes, it all makes sense now. A sausage detective? Yes, the calling card of Baron von Vinskendach, a notorious robber of banks in the West London area. But that's only about four banks. Indeed, Chief. And this is the seventh time he's robbed one, leaving a sausage each time. The detective will be figuring out my evil genius. <laughs> Damn this inferno flu. It will never go away. I'm back, sir. What took you so long, peasant? Well, in case you hadn't noticed, darling, you live on a mountain in the middle of Germany. That's pretty far from London, wouldn't you say? Say, why don't you rob- Shut up! I shall rob where I wish, and I wish to rob- <laughs> Well, darling, do what you will, but I'm done with this. Oh, you think so, do you? Well, yes, indeed I do. Oh, John! Oh, John! Where is the disturbed fool? I'm here, my lord, I was just- <laughs> Milking some socks. Yeah, well, do what you will, but just take this kind gentleman down to the, to the dungeon. dungeon. But, sir, uh, there's not that much space there. Oh, shut up, you one-eyed fool, and just take them to the cellar. Jean was a strange and small beast. 
as small as a gremlin with a face beyond such. He would almost roll when walking and didn't do so in fear that his ankles may give away to his almighty weight. He made his way to the thief and kindly escorted him to the dungeon, which was nothing more than a cupboard on the left side of the kitchen where the floor had somewhat subsided. <laughs> Chief, I'm off to Holland. I see. And from there I shall make my way to Germany, and I shall put an end to the ferocious acts of Baron von Vinskendutch, once and for the time being. Well, I'll be in touch, Wesson. You may receive a letter from my beautiful assistant in the next week or so. You'll know because of how beautiful the letter will... Sir? Oh, uh, yes, of course, of course. Of course, of course, yes. And so Smith set off on the adventure of about a week. He packed his suitcase with three suits and a flashlight, deciding that the world would buy the rest with the pounds he had in his trousers. And if they didn't take pounds, then, he thought, what kind of uncultured morons were they? He arrived at the docks, which smelt of fish and fishermen, each looking and smelling worse than the last one he passed. Ah, Dockman! Over here, Dockman! Sir? Oh, I see you remember the force. I see you are a member of the criminally slow. I need a right to Holland, Duckman. Well, I don't serve pigs. Glad to hear that. I've always hated pork. Smith then proceeded to barge past the Duckman and boarded the ship. The Duckman was an extremely small fellow and would appear as though he were crawling when he walked due to his lengthy arms. Etched into the side of the great wooden galleon he boarded was the ship's name, the Windy Willycock. Its captain was a terribly disturbed man, known among pirates as Long Richard Johnson for his strange behavior, as it was once rumored that there was a mildly strange man known as Richard. Not for anything notable, just it was thought that he may have once existed. The Johnson part's origin story has faded to the knowledge of the ocean floor. The ship itself was nearly as crooked as the captain's spine and was rotting at the same rate. Ah, well, isn't the sea a beautiful sight? Makes you just want to do a lot of poetry, doesn't it? We haven't left the dock yet. Ah, yes, of that I am sorely aware. Little man, 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 my, my legs are a little bit itchy. Ha, ha, oh, 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 my goodness, isn't yours? No, it is not. There, I thought you would, uh, I thought you would appreciate it. Ah, what it is to have the salty sea air among one's ankles, choking them ever so- Get a grip, detective! Ah, yes, yes, of, of course. First you come on unannounced, then you tell me of the sea when we are in the dockyard, and then you attempt to look brutally ravish my ankles. Dear sir, get a hold of yourself. Yes, well, I- I are so days! Well, this man is a detective. Who who exactly are you? I am Smith Wesson, PDLTGVKO, working under the Irish Mile. The Irish Mile, eh? They once found me daughter. I thought I ran, she was. You must have been devastated. You must love her very much. Captain Richard made a gruff noise and revealed a ring residing on his appropriate finger. Your wife? Ah, shoes. <laughs> I, I am... Um, uh, uh, anywho, let's set off. To Holland! The captain proceeded to take the money Wesson offered, and they set off on the voyage. Ah, the sea air. Do you have a right, ducky boy? A, a, a man? No, I tend to the ship and I get my wages. If you could let me go do just that, I would appreciate it. Ahem. Ah, what it is to be on the great blue, blue, blue claying card that has been a tainted a blue. Hark, I scream among the cruel, yet not so 
horrible seagulls that would play with the children and be mildly horrible. Ah, yes, the sea, as I hark among the playing card sea of seagulls and tainting blue. Ha! Ah. Thoughts, Stockman? I've been thinking of that one for the last ten minutes. Utter crap. What? I said utter crap. Well, if you want to... No, no, it wasn't that great. No, maybe poetry isn't how I should spend my days. After all, I am the greatest detective in the west of London. That is all one needs to aspire to, and I've already reached it. Well, if your work's anything like a poetry, I assume West London has become apocalyptic. <laughs> mm. After making such a remark at Smith's expense, he then proceeded to walk away and clean up all the atrocious smells coming from the lower decks. What a git. No talent or taste in anything. They spent months on the sea. Smith had taken up poetry. The dockman still hated it. And the captain's spine was being held up by a broom handle strapped to his back. It was generally bright and wholesome on the great plains of the ocean. Not a cloud of steam nor land. Smith was admiring the sea and was mustering up ways he could incorporate playing cards with the sea. A bell suddenly rang and the captain's voice shook the floorboards beneath Smith. They shook in a tone of his name. Intrigued by such, Smith walked down to the open door of the captain's quarters. Ah, come in there, you lad! Smith walked into the strange, grotto-like quarters, having to duck from the low ceiling and the various adornments that hung from it. The entire hovel was soaked with water and, like the rest of the ship below the top deck, Stank of residue from kraken tentacles and so forth. Smith sat down on the chair that squeaked with its water content. Sure, who are ye? I did introduce myself when I first boarded, about three months or so ago now. <laughs> yes, what was the joke? Ah, a joke, me boy? Well, well, Captain, you were laughing. I'm sorry you're wrong, my boy. I wouldn't do such a thing as that. <laughs> Indeed. So what did you want to talk to me about? Uh, right then, you jacks, look her. I seem haven't forgotten. Captain Richard screwed up his face, contorting it so in directions that Smith could hardly watch. He furrowed his brow, which brushed his lip, and slumped over, his belly rubbing his hip. Suddenly, a cannibal fired through the wall behind him. Ah, that would be me. I've already got a ship aside us. Another ship? Firing cannonballs? At the ship? At the captain's quarters? Good grief! Will Smith Wesson survive his perilous adventure aboard the Windy Willycock? Will angry seagulls ravish him and the crew? Will he ever receive a letter from the chief? Will he bring an end to the evil actions of Baron von Vinskendach? Find out next time when you listen to The Astounding Tales of Smith Wesson. P-D-L-T-G-B-K-O Thank you.
Thank you.